all 10,000 rescuers were assembled for testing. At that time, the main character did not yet understand the seriousness of the situation. Apart from him, an ordinary person, there were 9,999 cultivators, and they all have to face each other. There are 365 days left before the descent of higher powers. Our hero logged in and received a reward for the first authorization. He received the power of a thousand-year-old monster. On the second day, he will be able to gain the combat experience of the legendary demon. On day 30, the guy will be able to destroy stars with just one blow. He dreamed of raising his level to Star Destroyer. The action begins in the city hospital. People in black suddenly burst into one of the wards. They were with weapons and threatened Alex. He said that he had quit and had nothing to do with them, and asked his sister to leave their ward. A smiling man entered the room. It was Ralph. He ordered everyone to lower their weapons, because they were not threatening anyone, but just wanted to talk. Seeing a young girl in a hospital bed, he asked Alex if this was his sister, but without waiting for an answer, he continued, saying that he had heard that this girl had lost her parents, and her brother raised her. But without having time to enjoy the delights of life, this cute creature was serious got sick. The man said that the company helped the guy financially support the life of his sister, but turned out to be ungrateful and did not want to call him Boss Ralph, to which the guy promised that he would close all accounts and return the money lent to him. But the guy would take on the debt for the amusement park project I wasn't going to, and said that he could only quit. Ralph grinned and recalled that Alex himself asked to be appointed to the post of head of the financial department of this project. The man understood that the guy simply grabbed the opportunity to cure his sister, but then for some reason, he suddenly quit. The boss threatened and asked because Alex doesn't want anything to happen to his sister. The main character got angry and rushed at Ralph, asking him what he wanted to do with his sister. Ralph said that he is not a monster, and he does not like to watch this girl suffer, but someone should take responsibility for the failure of the project and apologize by committing suicide. He advised the guy to think carefully, because if he resists, then no one will take care of his sister. But if he agrees and helps restore the company's reputation, then they, in turn, will pay his sister's medical bills for several decades to come. Ralph told him to think carefully and come to the company office the next day. The next morning, Alex came to the office. There he was met by Evelyn, who urgently needed to tell him something, and she asked if he had a minute for this. The guy told her that now is not the best time to be near him, to which the girl replied that she didn't care about what could go wrong, because she might not have such an opportunity again. She decided to confess to the guy that she liked him, and she was interested in whether he felt something for her. He was surprised by the girl's words, but apologized to her since he was not in the mood to think about something like that at the moment. Evelyn was upset and replied that she understood everything. She asked him to close his eyes because she wanted to give him a parting gift. The girl leaned towards his ear and said that she had heard that if he left alive, the company would pin all the responsibility on her, and for her sake he must die. Having said this, the girl pushed him off the roof of the skyscraper, but he grabbed her hand and asked if she was crazy, and the girl only said in response that he just needed to die honestly, but he said that if she didn't want to die with him, then she should pull him out. The girl was scared because she was flying very quickly down from the roof of a skyscraper and she had practically no chance of surviving. She saw the doors below open and thought that she needed to get into them. This was her only chance to survive, but the doors closed before she could reach them. In response to her screams and the sound of her body hitting the ground, People started running and they called the police. Alex sat on the floor and thought about the fact that he fell from the top floor and was still alive. He didn't understand what was happening because he was on the same street where their company was located. But for some reason there were no people around. He heard a voice saying that all 10,000 rescuers had arrived and the tests were beginning. His thoughts were interrupted by the scream of a girl who demanded that he get out of the way. She rushed past him very quickly and this confused his thoughts even more. The guy looked around and didn't understand where he was and what kind of tests these were. He saw what the others were doing and didn't understand whether people were capable of this. The girl told him that only special cultivators could enter the secret world in order to pass tests, and she did not understand how an ordinary person got there. Lizzie told him about it, that that monster almost killed him, and he thanked her for saving her and said that he didn't understand how he got there. He wanted to know how to get out of there. The girl upset him saying that after the start of the test it was impossible to get out, he would have to wait until the test was completed. But there were various monsters everywhere, and this was too dangerous for him. She invited the guy to stay with him during this time. They heard footsteps approaching. It was the head of their team. He told the girl that this place was not for charity, 
Even for cultivators, this place was dangerous, and if she wanted to bear this burden, then he insisted that she leave their team. The girl was surprised and asked if Andy really wanted to leave this guy to his fate. Alex told her that she shouldn't worry about him. She had just saved him, and thereby done a lot for him. Even if he was left alone, he would definitely get out of this world alive. Since he has a very good reason to return, his sister is waiting for him. Andy was outraged. He told Alex how he even allowed himself to open his mouth, and that he really wanted to look at the guy's face after he lost hope of getting out of there. Alex was surprised that they just disappeared. It looked like they had evaporated. For a split second, he thought that Lizzie would stay with him, but she left him a sword, although he doesn't even know how to use it. A pop-up window appeared in front of him, telling him that the system was activated and he could receive generous rewards when entering the secret world. He looked at these inscriptions and thought that all these sound effects and the light screen came out of nowhere. Alex pressed the button and received a reward for the first day in the system. It was the power of a thousand-year-old monster. After this, the guy received a surge of strength, and the fatigue from yesterday completely disappeared. At the same time, in the real world, sound notifications began that tests for the defenders had begun in the secret world. And if these tests were failed, then the forces of another world would descend to Earth, and human civilization would be wiped off the face of the Earth. All the people heard this sound, but did not understand where it was coming from, and began asking each other if everyone could hear it. Phones began to automatically download an application broadcasting what was happening in the secret world. People discussed whether all this could be true. Some also wanted to be in the secret world and have spiritual power, like the cultivators. Out of curiosity, they started logging into the app. But before the broadcast, they were told the story of the creation of a secret world. The virtual presenter Anzi appeared on the screens. She talked about how it was a great honor to be invited to such a significant project. She introduced the people next to her. The man participated in the tests every year and always emerged victorious from them. His name was Robert and the girl's name was Nellie. The man said that various sects of cultivators are ready to invade other worlds. The monsters are fierce, but the cultivators will not miss the opportunity to fight. And the girl said that the elder's statement was very encouraging for everyone. They said that the application has the ability to reward your favorite heroes. The learned coins can help the savior in the secret world increase his power. Viewers can independently choose the Savior's rooms to watch the broadcast. When they opened one of them, people saw him begging for mercy. People thought that the presenters were contradicting themselves because this rescuer had just entered the secret world and had already died. All three presenters were upset. They had no words to comment on what was happening. And then the virtual presenter suggested entering the next room. And in this broadcast, viewers saw pleas for help from the cultivator. He shouted that he did not want to die. Wiping the cold sweat from her face, she suggested moving to the third room, so they visited many rooms. Nellie apologized to her subscribers for the fact that the presenters and cultivators could not meet their expectations. She said that these should have been broadcasts of bloody battles and not pitiful screams. Robert didn't understand what was wrong, because the first test in the secret world shouldn't have been so difficult. New notifications have appeared that supernatural forces from another world have increased the power of the offensive, the difficulty of the tests has increased, and for the first time, five zero zero year old monsters will appear in the tests. The girl expressed her assumption that these monsters are incredibly strong and asked the elder if she was right. The man said that the longer a monster lives, the stronger it is. The combat power of the current strongest cultivator is equal to 1,000 years of life of monsters, but younger cultivators are chosen by the secret world and they are much weaker. Angie told the audience that Robert explained everything why the cultivators were not coping with their task. She asked to show respect to the Earth's rescuers and support them with coins in the application. In one of the broadcasts, viewers saw that a guy was sitting and eating noodles. Everyone began to discuss that in all the other rooms there were screams and blood, but in this one, there was such calm. Nellie guessed that this cultivator was very strong since he was so calm. Robert interrupted her, saying that this guy does not have any special power because he is an ordinary mortal. The announcer quoted the words of the presenter and asked if everyone had heard that this was an ordinary mortal. Even cultivators are disgraced in the secret world. And if Alex had met the monster, he would have been dead a long time ago. People began to place bets on how long this guy would last. The voiceover said that the number of viewers has increased and perhaps someone wants to support Alex with an award. Someone began to argue that it was better to give the coins to a cultivator and not to an ordinary mortal this person went into the broadcast to see how this guy would die. Suddenly, someone noticed a monster in the corner of the room. 
Some wished Alex good luck, and many in the chat wrote that he was about to die. Nelly is outraged that the secret world called an ordinary person to protect the planet and asked the Elder if it was possible to rescue him from there. To which he replied that the secret world was created by cultivators of ancient times and they were not able to control it. And besides, it was too late since the tests had already begun. Having met a 100-year-old monster, this guy will not live even three seconds. Seeing the monster, Alex thought that this monster had six eyes and was much larger than the one he had already seen. Perhaps this was an improved version. Even though, thanks to the distribution of the system, he received the power of a 1000-year-old monster, he is still excited. The monsters in the novels are thousands of years old, and he cannot be compared with them. The monster began to attack, and the guy realized that he was slow enough, and Alex had enough time to dodge him. The supernatural force could not understand where the man had disappeared. The guy thought that perhaps the monster's speed was deliberately provoking him into action and exhausting him. Alex remembered the sword that Lisi left him. He held it tightly in his hands and decided to use it to attack the monster. The guy attacked the monster and hit him with his sword. However, the monster was unharmed and did not receive any harm. But the guy's sword was broken in half. The guy thought that he was right and the monster was simply provoking him. He wanted Alex to receive damage from his own attack. Commentators said that the Elder was once again wrong because the guy had already held out for more than three seconds. Many were delighted that the guy dodged so well, that the monster couldn't even touch him. But there were those who believed that there was no point in dodging, because there was no sense in his terrible attack. Even his sword was broken. What could he do with it now? Angie was amazed at how easily Alex was able to avoid all of the monster's attacks. Nelly was also shocked by his ability to dodge, and suggested that he might be able to kill the monster. Robert admitted that he underestimated the guy, and suggested that perhaps in the real world he was a martial artist. However, only spiritual attacks can harm the monster, and only cultivators are capable of them. It's a shame, but there is no chance for a mortal in this battle. One hit from the monster, and the guy will be dead. The guy was inattentive, dodging blows, he ended up in a dead end. He had no way to dodge. But he could pretend to attack and push him away. While the monster is scared, Alex needs to take the chance and break the deadlock. Alex began to attack, but the monster remained in place. The guy did not understand anything. He thought that the enemy should retreat. One of the commentators remembered the words of the Elder that only a cultivator can harm a monster. However, it seems that even a mere mortal could do it. One of the commentators said that they wanted children from this guy. People started supporting the guy with coins. Thanks to donations from viewers, the guy was able to increase his combat power by 50 points. He thought that the rewards from the audience helped him improve his combat power, but he didn't feel it at all after which Alex received a request to increase his combat power. A man in a formal suit and dark glasses ran to Ralph and said that their affairs were bad, since the guy from the broadcast was the same Alex whom they wanted to make guilty of the last project. The boss didn't understand what was wrong with this and why the man was panicking so much, but he explained to him that this broadcast was from a secret world that had chosen a guy to protect the Earth from monsters, and Alex had already managed to kill one of them. The man assumed that the guy might return into their world and take revenge on them. Ralph interrupted his reasoning and said that he already knew all this. He ordered that all responsibility for the failure of the project be placed on the employee who jumped from the roof of their office that morning. He also ordered all of Alex's sister's medical bills to be paid, saying that they would try to reconcile against this background. The employee asked if the boss had taken into account Alex's reluctance to reconcile with them. Ralph grinned and asked if the man really thought that he was scared of this guy and that's why he wanted to try on him. Alex was just lucky that he managed to kill this one zero zero year old monster. For the social elite, the existence of cultivators has never been a secret, and if something happens, the boss can always turn to a couple of them to put Alex under siege. Angie reported that an hour had already passed since the activation of the secret world. The situation had changed in favor of the cultivators, and they continued to defeat monsters. She asked to continue to support the defenders, and thanked the Elder for helping ordinary people understand the details of the battle. Nelly complimented her words, suggesting that the Elder had the greatest effect on viewers when commenting on Alex's broadcast and said that she would like to invite Robert to participate in entertainment shows. To which the man looked gloomy and said that he was not in the mood for jokes. He reported that the current situation is much less optimistic than everyone thinks. The tests are intensifying and more and more adult monsters will appear in the secret world when 500-year-old monsters appear, the cultivators will face the most difficult tests. 
Angie said that she has a different point of view on this matter. Rescuers are fighting for their lives, and therefore people should believe in them and support them. She said that no one could have thought that Alex would be able to defeat the 100-year-old monster and offered to look into his room again. Seeing that the guy was sleeping peacefully in his room, people began to grin at him. Some began to say that they had lost the desire to support him with coin. They talked about that. That we need to support those rescuers who fight monsters. Angie got angry at the commentators and said that he was not a cultivator, but a person like all of them, and their comments should be justified. The elder supported the artificial leader and said that this guy was an ordinary mortal, and although he managed to defeat the monster with one blow, it was not as easy as it seems at first glance. Only by gaining time by dodging the monster's attacks was he able to gather enough strength to defeat him. Nelly said that the guy's condition was disappointing and suggested moving to the room of another cultivator. Commentators said that this guy was cool, wished him good luck and promised to reward him with coins. Suddenly a huge monster appeared and the entire screen was covered in smoke. People did not understand what happened and who won this fight. People wrote that it was just smoke and Nicholas would definitely cope with it. You just need to throw him more donations. The elder fearfully said that this is a 300 year old monster and only a madman can challenge him. He suggested that this guy is looking for death. Angie interrupted him and said, however, there were already cultivators who fought and defeated 300 year old monsters. The man answered her, saying these were the disciples of the four main clans and they are much stronger than their peers. And this guy is an ordinary practitioner without his own sect. It's a miracle that he managed to defeat the 200-year-old monster. The smoke began to clear and Nicholas appeared on the screens. He asked if this was all the power of a 300-year-old monster. This disappointed him. The guy wanted to meet a monster with whom he could show all his power. A huge monster appeared in front of the guy, and commentators discussed the fact that the elder was wrong again. Some wondered where Alex was. One of the watchers saw someone emerge from the ruins and suggested that it might be him. Alex thought that he wanted to take a little nap and the building collapsed for no reason. Seeing the monster and Nicholas, he assumed that the guy needed help because the enemy was too big. Nicholas seemed to read his thoughts and asked Alex not to move, saying that only his strength was enough against this monster. The guy dealt a crushing blow to the monster. The audience began to admire Nicholas, saying that they were his fans and that he delivered a mind-blowing blow because he was able to chop off the head of a 300-year-old monster in one go. However, the monster's head grew back Spectators turned to the guy, shouting that there was danger behind him. The guy realized that this was one of the monsters that had the ability of super-fast regeneration. Moreover, his spiritual power also increased. The guy realized that he would have to play with this monster and dealt him a blow that crushed mountains. The enemy flew to the side and fell. Alex, watching the battle, thought that it looked much cooler live than on TV. Nicholas struck one after another. Commentators assumed that this monster had been hacked because he had already received a huge number of fatal blows. Some said that if they were Nicholas, they would have given up long ago. One of the spectators said that he wanted to call the guy a weakling after so many attacks that led to nothing. But after seeing Alex, he decided not to do this. Compared to him, this is an amazing battle. Angie asked the elder if this monster was really impossible to defeat. The man talked about it, that there are monsters with fast regeneration and they are a difficult species to kill. If you do not deal a fatal attack at a certain moment, it is difficult to kill. As a rule, several cultivators fight such monsters in parallel and attack from all sides in order to actually kill the monster. Nicholas is a great talent with promising abilities. His power is not inferior to the disciples of the four major sects. In ancient times, his achievements would have been unthinkable, but in this battle he will not be able to survive. The guy thought that he had practically exhausted his spiritual and physical strength he was afraid that this was the end. He decided that everything could not end like this. Always when his spiritual energy was depleted, he continued to believe in ancient myths. After abandoning the family inheritance and going through various tests, he found the cultivator sect. Nicholas constantly heard the same thing, that he didn't have enough talent and it wasn't his, but he would change his destiny and make his way with his sword. He wanted to win the title of lifeguard and planned to attract an audience from other rooms so that they would support him with a coin. The guy saw absolutely nothing wrong with this. He learned the art of the sword with such difficulty that he cannot just die. The ancient secret art that he learned has a high risk of death, but when to try it if not now. While watching the battle, Alex admired the special effects and the strength of the cultivator. The silence was alarming. He was afraid that Nicholas might be injured. He decided to go and check what was wrong with the guy. 
The guy replied that he was fine and had finally defeated this monster. However, this was not the case and he turned out to be alive. The cultivator did not understand how this was possible since he was supposed to die from the blow. He shouted to Alex that he needed to run away from there. But the main character decided to act and used his spiritual power. He asked again what the cultivator told him since he did not hear him. Nicholas decided to apologize to him for his recent behavior. The guy admitted that this battle was too tough for him and he was very lucky that he met Alex. He offered to cooperate in order to defeat the monster. Alex was surprised and asked if he was not already dead. But Nicholas asked him not to be careless because this is a rare type of monster that is capable of rapid regeneration. In order to fight this monster, you will need at least four cultivators with the same level, but if they attack together, that should be enough to kill him. The only problem is that Nicholas has already exhausted his strength, so the winner must be determined in the next attack. Otherwise, they will become the prey of this monster. Alex thought about everything Nicholas said and agreed with him. The guy ordered Alex to join his attack in this case. They had to attack while the monster was regenerating in order to inflict maximum damage on it. They had about five more seconds to prepare. Nicholas prepared for the attack. Alex didn't understand what five seconds to prepare meant and decided to just stand there as usual. After five seconds, the guys were ready to launch their joint attack. A minute later, they stood and looked at the lying monster. Alex said that, that he didn't seem to be regenerating and asked if they needed to wait longer. Alex saw that his partner was coughing up blood and asked if everything was okay, to which he replied that everything was fine. It was just too difficult to maintain himself in fighting condition after such a fight. He just needed to rest a little. Nicholas did not understand how Alex managed to kill this monster with one wave of his hand, because all he did all this time was just eat. Perhaps his original strength was greater than his. The guy was so immersed in his thoughts that he forgot about the side effects of his last attack. Blood flowed from his eyes and he realized that his spiritual power was leaving his body. It was as if he was being torn apart from the inside. He cried out that he did not want to die. Alex was thrown to the side by the blast wave and he did not understand what happened because they were just chatting and his interlocutor suddenly exploded. Alex suggested that it might have been a monster attack, and he hurried to leave while he was lying on the ground and pretending to be dead. The audience did not understand why Nicholas blew himself up. Some wondered where Alex's haters had gone, but there were also those who believed that the guy was deliberately waiting while Nicholas and the monster hurt each other. Everyone thought that this was an unpredictable result of the battle because an ordinary mortal won. Nelly asked the elder what he thought about this battle and the fact that the cultivator blew himself up. The man regretted the guy's death. He said that this happened due to the fact that the young man excessively used techniques that exceeded the limits of his body. And as for Alex's technique, it reminds Robert of a long lost sect of cultivators. It was a body cultivation sect that imitated the abilities of monsters. They copy the monster's techniques, turning spiritual energy into pure power that only their bodies can withstand. The human body has limits, although at the beginning the cultivation speed is higher than that of an ordinary cultivator but the strongest cultivator can reach the power of a 1-0-0-0 year old monster, which is why this sect died out. The guy used pure strength during the battle, but not spiritual key energy. Most likely, Alex is a follower of this sect. That is why he was able to show power that defies any explanation. Watching the broadcast, the boss wondered if Alex was really that strong and belonged to one of the cultivator sects. The man in the suit reminded Ralph that he could still turn to familiar cultivators because Alex would not be able to achieve greater power than a one zero 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 year old monster. Ralph got angry and yelled at his employee, advising him to remember the words of the elder, who said that in the modern world, the strongest cultivator has a power of no more than 1,000 years, and Alex is already capable of killing a one zero 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 year old monster. The boss could not afford to hire a cultivator of that level. The guy asked his boss to calm down. After all, all this time, no matter what problem they faced, it was Ralph who solved it. The man agreed with him, saying that they had not yet reached a dead end. The park project was headed by the third son of the Schmidt family, and after such a failure, they would not stand aside. Be that as it may, they need to take time for Walter Schmidt to understand the situation. The boss sent an employee to the hospital to kidnap Alex's sister, and he ordered to inform the company employees that everyone had a day off. The man was surprised because he just wanted to suggest to the boss to increase the number of guards, since it was too weak. Ralph advised the man to calm down as he was confident in his actions. From a street hooligan, he walked step by step to who he is now and left a bloody trail at every step. He is afraid that his sins can only be atoned for by going to hell, and therefore he will fight for his life. 
Before going to hell, he wants to see the landscape from above. The guy shouted to the girl that she urgently needed to run away. We were attacked by an angry monster. She hid around the corner, trying to catch her breath. Lizzie was scared, because all those with whom she fought died. Everything did not go according to plan. They had to kill monsters and improve their skills, saving the earth, but they died one by one. She wanted it all to end because she couldn't run away forever, waiting for the tests of the secret world to be completed. Alex saw the girl and came up to find out if it was her. She asked if this was the mortal who entered this world at the beginning of the test. The girl was surprised that he was still alive. Lisi was surprised that he managed to survive in a world with so many demonic creatures. He said that all this time he was just lucky and thanked her for the sword that she gave him. Apologizing, he admitted that he had broken it. The guy asked her where all her partners were and she sadly reported that they had all died. She said that they were pursuing their dream. They wanted to become rescuers and protect the planet, but practitioners from a small collapsed clan were not destined to do this. For the monsters of this world, they turned out to be a mere snack. Alex agreed with her, saying that just recently one of the cultivators exploded in front of his eyes and he didn't even notice the monster's attack. The guy invited her to join him if she wanted. Lizzie suggested finding him a good place to hide and wait until the strongest cultivators deal with the main boss, after which they can return to the real world, and in case of danger, she will try to protect him. The audience smiled at the phrase that she was offering protection to the guy. Some of them said that the strongest cultivator was right in front of her. The girl ordered him to stay close to her, as far as she knew it should be safer there. The guy told her that he heard some sounds nearby. At that moment, a huge monster appeared in front of them. The girl told the guy not to turn around and run to that large building. Alex said that they would not be able to escape from the monster if they got into the building. But Lizzie assured him that she had already run away from this type of monster, and she succeeded. Lizzie asked him to believe her, and the guy shouted that she had just assured him that this was the safest place, and this monster appeared in front of them. How could he believe her? The girl grabbed him in her arms and carried him towards the building. He asked what she was doing, but the only answer he received was that she had no time to explain. He just has to trust her. Once in the building, the guy realized that the monster had really left them behind, after which he apologized to the girl for not believing her. Trying to catch her breath, she told the guy that such monsters have very good eyesight, but they have problems with hearing, so they can easily hide from him in a building with a complex layout. Before leaving, she suggested going up to the top floor and waiting 10 minutes so that the monster would definitely leave. Lizzie suggested using the elevator for this. Alex asked her if it would be safer for them to go up the stairs. The girl agreed with him, that from a safety point of view the ladder is better, but she asked him to think about it, because ever since she got into the secret world, she has been running away from monsters all the time, and she also just had to drag him on herself. She simply did not have the strength, and she didn't want to take a single step. Alex didn't expect the cultivators to be so weak. Lizzie asked him if he thought that they were training in the gym. The girl assured that nothing bad would happen if they used the elevator. Besides, that monster didn't look smart enough to know how to use the elevator. The guys entered the elevator and the girl pressed the button up. When they reached the top floor, they saw many dead cultivators. Alex suggested that one of the monsters had finally learned to use the benefits of civilization and then asked the girl if she recognized the wounds on the bodies of the dead. He was interested in whether they were inflicted by the monster that was chasing them. The girl replied that these were some other wounds. It looked like this building was the territory of another monster. They realized that this was a trick and they were lured into this building. The goal of that monster was to drive them into this building for another. They had too little time to hide reliably. If these monsters surrounded them, they would be doomed. They needed to find a wide area with shelter in order to later escape from the building. Alex remembered that on the diagram he saw a large office on the upper floors. They ran to this office to try to hide there. A little later, a monster entered the office. They weren't sure if it was a good idea to hide, but they hoped they were in his blind spot and he couldn't hear them. The audience thought that Alex needed to escape because otherwise the monster would kill him. Others believed that it was time for the guy to stop pretending and need to deal with this monster. The girl said, if suddenly the monster finds them, she will try to distract his attention and Alex will need to run away. Alex said that he could also help her. He had already managed to defeat the monster once, although it was weak. She asked him not to show off, because protecting ordinary people is the duty of cultivators. She promised that she would handle it and just detain him for a while, and then she would also run away. The guy said that it seemed to him that she was showing off, and now they both should shut up because he hears some other sounds and they are getting closer. 
Lizzie cursed and said, Is it really another monster? After which she added that the guy has very sensitive hearing, since she hasn't heard anything yet. She smiled and said, If the guy were on the same page with that monster, then they would be a good team with the monster's vision and Alex's hearing. He looked at the girl and asked if she really thought that now was the right time for jokes. The girl also began to hear footsteps and said that if not now, then when she would be able to make a joke. Alex grabbed his head because the girl's words made sense. The monster was passing very close. The girl was scared. Judging by the pressure, she realized that this was a 300-year-old monster. She did not want to die. With every step the monster took, her heart sank. She didn't understand how they could cope with this terrible monster, and he was getting closer and closer to them. Spectators discussed the atmosphere of what was happening and what could happen if the monsters found the hiding rescuers. They started betting on how many blows the guy would need to deal with the new monster. One of the monsters launched its tentacles with eyes too close to the table under which the guy was hiding. One monster informed the second that he had found them. The first monster expressed his dissatisfaction with the fact that his brother always puts his hands on his head and thereby scares him. The second monster said that this guy was a monster because he destroyed their relative with one blow. He suggested that they pretend that they did not notice the guys and just leave. Red didn't understand why they were hiding if this cultivator was so strong. Green replied that he had no idea, but he would rather run away from here, and the second one was free to decide for himself what to do. Lizzie asked Alex what happened. Did the monsters leave? To which he replied that he couldn't hear them. They were somewhere far away. The girl answered perfectly, because she was sure that they would not be able to escape from them. Viewers began discussing the monster escape and what they were hoping to see Alex in action. The guys heard a notification from the secret world that the main boss would appear in the near future. It would be a 500-year-old monster. Alex did not expect that the battle with him would be so soon. The girl said that the complexity of the tests of the secret world terrifies her, and a 500-year-old monster is just something. She was interested in whether it was even possible to defeat such a thing. The girl believed that they needed to find a suitable place to hide. Alex said that they were on the very street where the main monster would soon appear. The girl screamed in fear. What are they waiting for? They need to run urgently. Having run away, they decided to catch their breath. Alex assumed that it should be safe there. The girl admitted that she saw the final boss out of the corner of her eye, and he seemed very creepy to her. The guy replied that all the monsters are quite creepy. What can one expect from the 500-year-old main boss? He suggested that maybe the secret world is sending them fake clues. Lizzie replied that in connection with recent events, this may well be true. But while they are hiding away from all events, nothing should happen to them. While they were discussing everything that was happening, a guy approached them. He introduced himself as Raph and invited them to join their sect in order to defeat the final boss. The girl advised him to find someone else, since they are weak and are trying to do everything to escape. He said that in this way they would not be able to pass the test. Raph told them that in other secret worlds there are disciples of the four main sects, and in their world only weak cultivators are gathered, and if they all run and hide, the boss will kill them all one by one. The guy said that their sect has an artifact that can kill a 500-year-old monster, but it takes time to activate it. Before it will be activated, they need to find a way to detain the main boss. Although they have already found many cultivators, this is still not enough. The more people, the higher the chances. The master turned to Raph and said that he returned faster than he expected. The guy said that in addition to their sect, he managed to gather 164 more people. The master asked why so few, because 2,500 people entered the fifth world. Raph replied that no one thought that the difficulty of the tests would increase so quickly. More cultivators died in the battles than expected, he told the master. This number of people would be able to delay the boss at least a little, and the master would be able to activate the Thunder Amphora during this time. The master looked at the artifact and said that he should have time to do this. The Thunder Amphora is one of the most important artifacts of their sect and can only be used once. The master remembered how his father gave him the Amphora because he was still weak. His father told him to use the Amphora as a reason to gather the cultivators. They would exhaust the monster, and then he would have to use the artifact to kill it. The guy didn't like the fact that this would cause a lot of deaths. Besides, the Thunder Amphora can be used at any time. It does not require any activation. His father sternly told him that by relying on the audience's rewards, he could become stronger and he needed to get them, which he would do by killing the main boss. The young master continued to insist that he could kill the main boss without these tricks. He did not need to get his hands dirty in order to receive rewards. 
He asked his father why he did not believe in him, and his father reminded him of his dream to make their sect equal to the main four. He said that he had worked for thirty years and made their sect the strongest among cultivators besides the core four. For the whole world, there are only two types of cultivators, disciples of four sects and all the rest of the garbage. The man said that, that they have always been trash, but with the advent of secret worlds they have a chance that they have no right to miss. In order to stand on the same pedestal with the four sects, it takes not only strength, but also hearts. His son had to make the disciples of the fifth world feel fear and despair, and then become their saviour. His plans were to later surpass the four major sects and become the main ones. He asked for forgiveness on behalf of the sect in front of the cultivators present. Then he said that their sacrifice was simply necessary. Those who joined them wondered whether this thunder amphora was real, and whether it could destroy the main boss, or whether it was a common excuse to turn them all into cannon fodder. One of the guys said that the young master had a very good reputation, and he couldn't lie. Besides, they didn't have many options. They would either trust him, or they will die in a secret world. Another said that if they kill the final boss, they will get a lot of coins and can become stronger. One of them grinned and said it would be good to stay alive, but he also dreams of coins. Of all the cultivators, only one will receive coins for killing the boss. Alex looked at the girl and told her not to even think about dissuading him. He wouldn't run away alone. She told him that he was an ordinary mortal and it was very dangerous to fight with a real boss of monsters. He replied that he received coins that increased his strength and everyone there was preparing to fight this monster. He couldn't just sit on the sidelines. She was surprised that he could increase his combat power using fate coins. He said that soon after he entered the secret world, he was lucky enough to receive coins of fate and they increased his combat power. But for some reason, after receiving the award, his combat power no longer increased. The girl replied that this is normal, because if you constantly reward someone with coins, then you can create a god. She also explained to him that thanks to coins, they can increase their strength only up to a certain limit, and then the storage increases only in battle. She said that usually only cultivators can turn coins into spiritual power, so he is some kind of exception to the rule, and she also did not feel spiritual power in him. Although he absorbed the coins, she grinned and asked him not to talk about being one of the strongest cultivators who was simply pretending to be a beginner. He grinned and said that he was tired of hiding and would now show his strength. The girl was surprised and asked if this was not a quote from a manhua. She didn't think he liked something like that. And he answered in surprise that he didn't know that cultivators read such things. Lizzy said that due to the spiritual depletion of the earth, no matter how hard they work, it is difficult to notice progress. In such conditions, only practitioners with outstanding talents can increase their potential. Most of them are actively in contact with modern society, and some have even become greedy money and power. In the real world, Ralph met with the cultivators in his office. They thanked him for his kindness towards them, and he promised that this was just a deposit, and after they completed the case, they would receive more. The guys promised to do everything to deserve it, but they were interested in whether there would be too many of them for one mortal, and whether the boss was overestimating him to which the man replied that it did not matter, and he had already sent them all the information about Alex. He defeated a 300-year-old monster in the secret world, so he should not be underestimated. The guy asked Ralph not to worry, assuring that they always completed their tasks. Of course they were amazed that he was able to defeat such a monster, but he is an ordinary person, and all his skills are just brute strength. He has no experience in fighting with cultivators or monsters. He also said that the spiritual power of the earth is depleted and the spiritual power acquired for coins in the secret world is dissipated on the earth. Therefore, they will be able to destroy Alex at any time after his return. The difficulty of the secret world trials increased again. The cultivators were not sure that the final boss was really 500 years old. Alex and the other rescuers were preparing for battle. One of the cultivators suggested that the guy could die without their participation. The boss promised that even if Alex dies in the secret room, they will still get what they promised. The cultivators sensed terrifying spiritual energy and wondered what was going on there. The boss was surprised that someone appeared too quickly. It was a cultivator bounty hunter who had been brought in to solve the problem with Alex. The master asked Raph if everything was ready to start. He answered in the affirmative, saying that all the cultivators had taken their places along the perimeter of the final boss's territory. According to the plan, with the appearance of the boss, the cultivators would take turns striking him with their blows. The master promised to use the artifact as soon as it was ready in order to avoid unnecessary losses. Alex asked if they wouldn't all attack the monster together. 
to which Lizzie replied that they were not playing some kind of video game, and if they attacked the boss all at once, they would be defeated in a couple of minutes. But if they all attacked in turn, they would distract his attention and give him time to prepare the artifact. The guy noticed that in this case, the group to which the monster will turn its attention first is in greater danger. The girl replied that they have no other choice, because this is exactly the plan of this sect, to sacrifice several people in the name of saving everyone else. So if someone is killed, then it's all down to his bad luck. The girl was confident in her ability to escape and knew that she would not die until she saw the ending. Lizzie promised to introduce the guy to one author after they emerged alive from the secret world. It turns out that he always dreamed of getting his autograph. He was also a cultivator, but he moved in circles of practitioners, and this helped him remain one of the best authors. The girl smiled and said that now he had another reason to get out of this place alive. Alex thought that they should survive this. And he finally said that they would definitely leave the secret world alive. The calm atmosphere was interrupted by a rumble and the appearance of light. This meant that the final boss was coming. Having appeared, he looked around and asked if this was really that secret world. In order to get there, he specifically asked the ruler to reduce his combat power to 500 years old. He wanted to taste the blood and flesh of the cultivators here. The command came that it was time to hunt. The guy ordered to get ready because the monster noticed them. They began to act according to plan, and this meant that it was necessary to attack and run away. The cultivators were amazed at his breakneck speed. The monster caught one of them and demanded to scream louder. He promised that if he helped him lure the others out, he would make his death easier. And the guy grinned at him, asking if the underdeveloped creature could speak humanly. While killing this guy, the monster shouted that he likes brave guys, especially when he crushes them like flies. Then he asked who would be next. He felt someone to the right. It was Lizzie. He said that he felt their spiritual energy, and there were two of them everywhere. But for some reason, this girl was alone. The girl replied that this is because she alone is enough to deal with such garbage as him. He chuckled and said he'd see how long she could last. Lizzie began to attack the main boss. She applied all her knowledge and skills. The monster grinned and asked if this was all she was capable of. He said that he found it funny how weak the cultivators of this generation were. Alex jumped out of cover. He decided to stand up for his fighting friend. Without realizing it, he used all his spiritual power and began to attack the boss. The guy's blow scared the boss, but he managed to dodge it. The final boss realized that there was at least someone strong among the cultivators and invited him to put up a real fight. However, Lizzie and Alex took advantage of the moment and ran away. Angie said that the final boss of the fifth world is a mutant. She herself could not understand what it all meant. According to information from the film crew, the stronger the monster, the closer its appearance to a human one, the final boss of the fifth world has already begun to transform into a human. Under normal circumstances, monsters over 800 years old are capable of this. Angie was outraged, because according to the rules, the final boss should be no older than 500 years, and this one is at least 800, so he is also in the weakest fifth world. Robert explained that the secret world notices cannot lie, but the fact that this monster is 500 years old does not make the test of the fifth world any easier. The girl asked the elder why the monster dodged Alex's attack so easily, but the man decided to leave his comment on this topic a little later. He suggested returning to the broadcast of the final battle of the first world, because it will end very soon. Lizzie admitted that she was very scared, and the show before the final boss almost gave her a heart attack. She had to distract the boss with her attack so that Alex could deliver his blow. Using the effect of surprise, the girl realized that the guy was stronger than her, but she did not understand why he continued to pretend in front of her. The girl thought that the final boss never caught up with them. Perhaps he was so scared that he decided to run away. They would have big problems if he ran beyond the perimeter of the Thunder Amphora. Meanwhile, the final boss crept up on her from behind. His target was Alex, but unfortunately, he was unable to sense his spiritual power, and he decided that he could lure him out by killing the girl. Lizzie realized that she could not move and decided that it was the end for her. However, Alex attacked the monster, preventing it from killing his partner. The monster was pleased that a strong mortal himself came into his mighty clutches. Viewers' opinions were divided. Some were glad that they would see Alex in action, while others were worried about him as the monster was stronger than it should be. The sounds of battle continued. Someone was fighting the final boss. One of the saviors said that this was their chance, but the second one told him that apparently he hit his head on something since he was about to fight the final boss. The guy with the ring already asked the second one what they should be afraid of. He offered to hit them together, and when they received the reward, divide it equally. The second rescuer was ready to go into battle, 
but asked the first to promise that in the end they would split the reward in half. Besides, there was that strong guy holding back the boss, so they had nothing to fear. Alex continued the duel with the boss on equal terms. Having dealt Alex a very strong blow, the monster asked Lizzie where she was looking. After this blow, the guy flew into the store window. The monster did not understand how Alex was still standing on his feet. Then he realized that his assumption turned out to be correct, and a powerful force was hidden in the guy's body. Only unfortunately, or fortunately, he did not know how to use it. Viewers' opinions were again divided. Some supported the guy and worried about him, but there were also those who called him a punching bag. Someone suggested stopping arguing and supporting the rescuers with coins. The final boss used more and more force each time. He told the guy no matter how resilient he is, he continues to take damage and he won't last long. He invited the guy to give him the opportunity to end his suffering. Lizzie entered the battle and used a light lasso. She tied the monster hand and foot. He began to growl because he could not move. Alex gathered his strength and began to strike one after another. Lizzie stood on the sidelines and thought that this magical object had sucked out all her spiritual energy and could not even hold the monster for a second. She also injured her right hand, which was now very painful. She thought that this was all she could do for Alex and begged him not to die. He was able to knock the monster down, but did practically no damage to it. And he was also beginning to feel exhausted. He thought that the monster was saying that there was some kind of power hidden in him, if only he knew how to use it. Alex heard someone approaching them. These were the guys who wanted to receive a reward for the death of the boss. One of them said that they were on time because the monster was seriously injured and now was the time to attack it. The main character asked them not to approach because the monster was still dangerous. The guy with the ring in his ear shouted that he wouldn't believe it and expressed his assumption that it was just hard for Alex, that the reward was being taken away from under his nose. He told Alex not to even try because the reward would be theirs. And he received a sword in the back. His partner corrected him, saying that the reward would be his. The guy was outraged. They agreed to divide the reward. However, the killer was sure that if he had not taken any action, then his friend, on the contrary, would have killed him. He just hit first and did not see anything wrong with that. He grinned and said that he could not even imagine what would happen the one who kills the boss. The monster looked at the traitor and thought that this man says that he will kill the boss, but he is just a small bug that is trying to interfere with his fight. The final boss jumped up from the ground and was ready to fight. Seeing this, the guy thought about what happened, because just recently the monster was on the verge of death. If he knew that everything would turn out like this, I wouldn't have come here. The master and Raph watched everything that was happening from a hiding place on the roof. They were surprised that the boss turned out to be a humanoid monster. The young master thought that even with a 500-year-old monster it would be difficult. Raphael told him that their artifact would be enough even for a 700-year-old monster, so they had nothing to worry about. But as it turned out, the guy was not worried about the monster, but about the guy fighting him. He couldn't believe that there was such a guy in the four major sects, although he could not be compared with the disciples of the major sects. Everyone would envy a talent like his. Raph agreed with the master, because no ordinary cultivator could withstand a battle with this monster. But judging by the situation, no matter how strong this person was, he would not be able to withstand. He asked the master when it would be possible to use the Thunder Amphora, because if they attack together with that guy, they will definitely kill the monster. The master replied that he himself knew about this and was trying to activate it as soon as possible. It would be a great loss, not only for the cultivators, but for the entire world to let such a talent die, no matter how difficult it would be. He had to save him from the monster. Boss moved towards Lizzie and said that she's just another bug that's bothering him. Alex pulled him back, saying that he was his opponent and that the girl shouldn't be involved in this. The monster hated the use of techniques in battle. He believed that the strongest decides everything using brute force. But for Alex, he wanted to make an exception and used a shadow cage. He reported that this technique was given to him from birth and he can use it without straining at all. The monster told Alex that with his power, it would only take 20 seconds to destroy this cage. During this time, he could have killed the girl 10 times. If he wants to see his girlfriend alive, he will have to release his power. Alex was angry and shouted that all this bastard was capable of msam 0020 ya was the use of vile tricks. After that, the monster said that he was joking and would not wait for the guy to free himself, but would kill his girlfriend right now. But it was too late as Alex had already freed himself and was ready to attack. The monster did not understand how he managed to do this. The guy said that thanks to his cage, he understood how to use its power. 
Looking at the guy, the monster said that he knows how to surprise. As a reward for this, he decided to return Alex to his partner. The guy grabbed her by the shoulders and started shaking her, trying to bring the girl to her senses. The monster reassured the guy, saying that the girl was alive and was simply unconscious. He did this so that the young man would not run away from him. The main character looked at the boss and said that he would not leave this place until he finished him off. The final boss growled menacingly and said that Alex shouldn't think too highly of himself just because he managed to defeat the simplest of the monster's techniques. He used the following technique. It was a shadow flow and suggested that the guy try to deal with it. Alex managed to handle this technique with ease, after which he sarcastically asked the boss if among his techniques there was something more complicated. The monster was amazed at Alex's strength and said that he clearly didn't appreciate him enough. The final boss said that he would no longer offend the young man and use weak techniques. Now he intended to incinerate him and leave only the skull for his collection. The guy stopped him, saying that he was talking too much. The monster did not understand how a mere mortal managed to be near him in a matter of seconds. Without wasting any time, the main character launched an attack. Alex asked the monster what this trick was about switching places with his shadow, because the boss mentioned that he does not use techniques in battle. The monster asked the guy if he was really an ordinary person, because judging by the strength of this guy, the boss didn't believe it. Realizing the state of his body, he turned to the guy and said that he was a bigger monster than he himself could do such a thing. He told the guy that he really killed him, but now he would regret it. After all, in order to get into this secret world, he reduced his age, and this death removed all limits from him, and now all they can do is pray. Raph turned to the young master, asking if he could see this. He was amazed that the young man had superiority over the monster. The master tossed the thunder amphora from hand to hand and said what a great coincidence this was. Raphael did not understand what he was talking about and asked him again. And the guy answered him that the thunder amphora was active and it was time to complete the test of the secret world. Raph was happy because he believed that they should help that guy as soon as possible. He suggested waiting a moment because he did not understand what was happening to the monster. He was amazed after realizing that the monster had become stronger, but he did not understand how much and only assumed, listing 700 years old, 800 years old, or perhaps even more, the young man assumed that such a strong monster in the first mission would simply kill them all. What he saw shocked the young master. Raphael tried to bring him to his senses and repeatedly asked if they were going to help the guy, but he decided to backtrack and expressed his assumption that he had made a mistake and the Thunder Amphora was not activated after all. The audience unanimously began to express their dissatisfaction with the master. They believed that he was simply chickening out. They all understood that he simply wanted to take Alex's glory for himself. And when he saw that his opponent only became more frightened and decided not to get involved. After Alex killed him, the monster returned to its original form. Alex chuckled at him, saying that he had a problem with his head because he belittles the human race and he himself took on a humanoid image. He continued by saying that he thought the monster was cuter, for example, in the form of a dog. The boss tried to shut him up, saying that he was completely different from the lower race, meaning humanity. He began his attack and said that people are just food, but monsters are at the top of the food chain. The presenters reported this, that in the first four secret worlds the final bosses have already been defeated, Nelly suggested, that the audience was as excited as they were and offered to thank the cultivators who protected them. Robert said that the powerful gods of another world intervened in the tests and they even managed to complicate them, and therefore he was pleasantly surprised by these victories. Angie suggested that after the victory of the remaining secret worlds, they should direct all the cameras to the fifth, which worried them the most. Looking at the broadcast, she saw a new image of the final boss. She asked in fear what this was, could it be the final boss of the second stage? Even Robert was amazed, because he knew that only monsters who have lived for more than 1,000 years can take on human form. Nelly fearfully said that the one 000 year old monster is a death sentence for all cultivators. The elder said that the combat power of a one 000 year old monster is 10,000. This level can only be reached by the best earth cultivator. This meant that the level of the monster Alex was fighting was that of the best cultivator on earth. The monster continued to attack the young man. Alex asked him if this was all he was capable of and said that he was even a little disappointed. The final boss chuckled and asked if the young man really thought he had won. He advised the main character not to deceive himself, because he used only 30% of his power so that the surveillance system of the secret world would not detect him. Alex replied that in that case he was calm, because he only used 20% of his strength. The monster decided to be sarcastic and said that he had made a mistake and only used 10%. 
Alex assumed that the monster had problems with math. One of the spectators said that he was amazed by the fighting technique in the first secret world, but this lasted until he saw how Alex fought. Almost all the viewers wanted to support the guy with coins, but there was one commentator who said that Alex was already strong enough and it was better to give the coins to other cultivators. The mercenary sat upset and thought that he only left one comment and everyone began to hate him. His partner came up to him and said that there was no point in telling the audience not to give coins to this guy. The mercenary said that if the audience is not allowed to increase Alex's combat power, then the monsters will definitely kill him. After which he asked if this was not good. Then he asked where their third brother had disappeared to. It turned out that he had sent a message. He urgently needed to go home to feed the cat. The mercenary again asked if the guy's strength was not growing due to donations from the audience. He was supposed to lose all the power that was given to him in the secret world immediately after returning to the real world. The man turned to Ralph, saying that he had forgotten to clean his cat's litter box and he urgently needed to go home, but he promised to return as soon as he had done all the work. The secret world warning system reported that the real age of the final boss had been revealed and in one minute the self-cleaning process was to begin. The monster was not prepared for the fact that he would be discovered so quickly and wanted to find out which of them was stronger before discovery. Alex told him about it, that they have a whole minute for this and promised to destroy the monster before this time runs out. The final boss said that Alex was beginning to understand what real fun was and suggested fighting to the end. The countdown began with only 50 seconds left on the timer. The monster began to attack. Ralph left his chair in the office. He realized that the cultivators he hired had fled at the last second and asked the cultivator hunter if he could handle it. He answered in the affirmative and said that the cultivators of the present time did not have enough combat experience. All they can do is humiliate the weak and there is no need to be upset about those three cowards. The boss continued to insist, saying that the guy's last fight was causing concern. He suggested contacting Mr. Schmidt so that he could send more people. The hunter grinned and asked the man whether he really wanted his boss to think that he was unable to cope with his job or whether the man wanted to disgrace the master in front of his entire family by telling about the failure of the project. The guy assured the man that after Alex returned to the real world, all his powers, bought with coins in the secret world, would leave him. And after that, their powers would be approximately equal. But neither spiritual nor combat power would help the guy when he entered fight with a hunter. In the secret world, the countdown continued and now there were already 20 seconds left on the timer. There were only five seconds left on the timer and the young man and the monster continued to actively attack each other. And when there were only three seconds left before the secret world itself was cleared, Alex managed to defeat the terrible monster. In the secret world, a notification sounded that the final boss had been defeated in the last seconds. And due to the fact that the power of the final boss exceeded the limits of this mission, Alex would be awarded two million coins of fate. Some viewers believed that not only the monster, but also Alex cheated, but others said that the guy receives a lot of donations and that's why he is so strong. One of the spectators said that after receiving two million coins, the young man would become so strong that the viewer even felt sorry for the monsters. A notification was received that only Alex could see. It said that 400,000 coins had been added to his account and new functions had been opened. Now the guy could buy various pills and weapons for them, but he could not understand where the remaining 1,600,000 coins had gone. Maybe they were distributed among the participants. The young man's thoughts were interrupted by Lizzie. She was shocked that he managed to defeat this terrible monster. Alex was outraged that the girl got up. He told her that she needed to lie down because she was wounded, and when she returned home, she must go to the hospital. The girl explained to him that after completing the mission, the secret world heals the injuries of the rescuers, so she is completely healthy. The young man said that the secret world can sometimes be useful. She asked the guy what happened to his injuries, but he replied that he didn't have any. Lizzie was surprised that he was able to kill the monster without a single injury. Grinning, she added that with such power he could take over the whole world. She asked him if he was definitely not a student of a secret sect or had not reincarnated 1,000 years ago. The guy replied that he did not relate to any of the above and that he was an ordinary mortal. Seeing what was happening around, the main character fearfully asked what was happening, why the secret world was collapsing. The girl explained to him that the mission in the secret world was completed and naturally they would return to their own. The first thing she wanted to do after returning was take a bath and get a good night's sleep. Alex was glad that they were returning to reality. Only half a day had passed, but it seemed to him that a whole month had passed. The guy was glad to return in peace.
The girl threateningly told the guy to shut up, because for him getting into the secret world was like going on vacation. She told him not to even hope to mix with the rest of the rescuers. She asked him why he was looking into the void with such a happy expression on his face. Was he really checking his coin balance? However, the guy at that time saw a new personal notification, which said that he had completed the mission with dignity, and therefore, even on Earth, he would be able to use the spiritual power received in the secret world. He was also promised that within a few days the pet would be released, and he must be ready for this. Upon returning to the real world, Alex was met by a crowd of people. They shouted and asked for his autograph. They all also wanted to take a photo with the hero. When he finally managed to get rid of all these people, he tried to understand what was going on. Lizzie again came to the aid of her partner and explained to him that the broadcast from the secret world was shown all over the earth and his popularity now could be the envy of many stars. She suggested that perhaps soon famous brands would begin to offer him to become their ambassador. He said that maybe then he can earn a lot of money. The girl asked in surprise whether he really needed money that much, and he told her about his sister's illness and that the doctors were not sure that they could help her. Perhaps if he had money, he would be able to find a better hospital. Lizzie was outraged that he didn't tell her about this sooner, because she could contact good doctors and cultivators who understood medicine, and she had money, and he didn't have to worry about medical bills. He apologized to the girl for dragging her into this situation, but said that it would be great to find good doctors for his sister, after which he promised to return all the money to her later. But she said that he saved her life, and this is much more expensive than medical bills. The girl suggested that he first find a place to eat, since she was terribly hungry, and only after that resolve the issue with his sister. Lizzie was surprised that she had not yet confirmed the order, and the taxi had already arrived, but she thought that the applications were improving every day, and there was nothing strange about it. Alex said that he was afraid that this was not entirely true, and the girl asked what was the matter. It was Ralph's man who reported that the boss was inviting the guy to his office to resolve their misunderstandings. The guy said that the misunderstanding sounds beautiful. If you don't take into account that the man without hesitation suggested that the guy commit suicide, he said that if they hadn't come for him, he would have done it himself. But now he has business, and he promised come tomorrow. The driver said that he had come on behalf of the boss, and Alex might not like what he said next, and asked him not to be offended. Alex told the guy to say what he had to tell him. The driver excitedly said that the boss had told him to tell him that Alex's sister had also been invited, and if the guy didn't come. Alex interrupted his words and said so, that I had no idea that they could fall so low. He got angry and said they might have overestimated his patience. Ralph's employee was scared. He said that he was an ordinary office worker and nothing depended on him. The director ordered him, and he had no choice, because he also had a family to take care of. Alex apologized to the guy, saying that he had lost control of his emotions a little, and asked the guy to take them to the office in that case. They got into the car and the driver took them to the office. The guy told them that the director was waiting for them and asked the girl not to talk about the fact that he had brought her too. Lizzie looked at him and said that he really, really wanted to live and promised that she would not tell the boss anything. He thanked the girl, saying that at his age it would be difficult to find a job and she recommended that he leave since this place would soon become unsafe. Alex asked the girl to stay, saying that he could figure it all out himself but she said that she couldn't stay on the sidelines after seeing such injustice. If this person saw Alex's fight in the secret world, then he definitely had something in store. She continued by saying that the combat power that he received thanks to the coins of fate in this world is useless, and therefore it could be dangerous even for him. Alex wanted to explain everything to her. However, the girl interrupted him and said that on the way she wrote to several cultivators she knew and asked them to drive up so now everything would definitely be okay. At this time, in Ralph's office, the hunter told him that he was becoming emotionally unstable, and he replied that he was on the verge between life and death and could allow himself a slight feeling of panic. The man recommended that the hunter calm down in order to achieve the desired result. Ralph said that he was jealous of the hunter's optimism, since he believed that he had already defeated Alex, after which he added that such an ordinary person should not interfere in their fight. The man said that the boss had already helped him enough because a cultivator's success in battle largely depends on his psychological state. An unbalanced cultivator cannot use his combat power. Focused cultivators, who are difficult to distract in battle, are the most annoying. They are difficult to defeat in battle. But Alex loves his sister. The fact that they kidnapped and hid his sister is more than enough to distract him. It would be even better if the office staff behaved like any other day, 
then Alex would have to take into account the safety of others, and he would be forced to doubt. Ralph asked if it was necessary to cross the border, because this meant hundreds of lives. Did the hunter really have no sympathy? After which he added that if there were many dead, his company would be closed down, to which the hunter replied that it was just his habit, and he was used to using all possible means to eliminate him at the sight of a strong opponent. If the boss had rejected his idea, then he needed to at least be confident in himself. Ralph promised to try his best to control his emotions. Judging by the situation, Ralph had prepared for this battle, and there was practically no one left in the office. Lizzie asked Alex if he really didn't want to wait a little, because her friends would be there very soon. But he replied that he couldn't remain calm until he was sure that his sister was safe. The girl said that she would go with him, but he asked her not to do this and to stay there, because if something happened, she could help him outside. Lizzie asked him to be careful and take as long as possible, and promised to come as soon as her friends arrived. Alex exhaled and quickly walked towards the boss's office. Entering the office, he saw not only Ralph there, but also some other man. The boss looked at him and said that they had finally met again, and then asked how his trip to the secret world was. The guy said enough empty talk, he was only interested in where his sister was. The man grinned and asked the main character not to worry, because his sister is just a guest in this place. It will be so if they forget about their misunderstandings. The man promised to remove responsibility for the failed project from Alex and pay huge compensation. Alex was persistent and ready to talk only after Ralph let his sister go. But the man was not satisfied with these conditions. He said that until he received evidence to reassure him, the girl would be an important hostage to him. The guy asked what would happen if he did not agree. Ralph replied that he would be forced to ask an advisor from the Schmidt Consortium to convince him. Alex asked the advisor. The hunter stood and could not move. He realized that no tricks could compensate for the difference in their combat power. The guy turned to the hunter and asked if he was an accomplice in the kidnapping of his sister. The man looked at the guy in fear and said that he was misunderstood. He was an ordinary advisor who arrived at this company because he learned that the young man had been treated unfairly. Hearing these words, Ralph was even more frightened than before. The hunter continued, saying that there are people like Ralph in the corporation. This is their omission, and they are ready to immediately return his sister and discuss any of his demands. Alex asked what would happen if he said that the boss should be held accountable. The man replied that it would happen anyway. He didn't understand whether the guy always had such power, or whether he found a loophole to use the coins of fate in the real world if he knew its secrets, and so he would have to play for time and wait for the support of the consortium. The boss was furious. He asked what all this meant and why the hunter was afraid of the worthless Alex. He replied that Mr. Schmidt's consortium adheres to a policy of honesty, and therefore if this guy wants to kill Ralph, he can do it. The man suggested that the consortium was going to abandon him and asked if they were afraid that he would drag them all down with him. The hunter asked if Ralph was threatening him, and then asked who he thought he was, because he was an ordinary bandit who managed to rise. Ralph agreed that no matter how hard he tried, he does not have the power like Mr. Schmidt and beyond the abilities like him, but even a mouse in a cage fights to the last for its life. He asked Alex if he knew what was underneath the amusement park, but the hunter interrupted him and told him to shut up, and in case of disobedience, he was ready to kill the man. Alex shut the man up and said that the boss should continue his story. Under this park there is a shelter base, secretly built by a consortium, and the amusement park is just a cover. As far as he knew there were several such shelters. People somehow know that monsters will soon be on Earth. However, the guy said that he didn't care. He didn't care about Mr. Schmidt, his consortium, or even less about this underground base. He just wanted to bring the boss to justice. The hunter said that the bases really exist, but if Ralph wanted to accuse the consortium of conspiring with monsters, then he needed more substantial evidence. Besides, it was his idea to frame Alex and kidnap his sister. The boss took something out of his pocket and said that since he was doomed to die, he would take them with him, after which he asked the advisor if he recognized the little thing in his hands. The man said that this is a spiritual energy suppression unit that can weaken the power of hunters and cultivators. He added that despite the fact that this thing is disposable, it is very expensive, and asked how the boss managed to get it. Ralph said that the man had never cared for him from the very beginning, but what would he care about now when he could lose his power overnight? To which the man replied that even after suppressing his power, what could an ordinary person like Ralph do to him? The boss said that he placed explosives in the amusement park and in the building so that all he had to do was press a button. The hunter plunged a knife into Ralph's chest and said that this was the only way he could stop him. Clearing his throat, 
The boss asked him if he was afraid that explosives were placed in the shelter, to which he replied that it no longer mattered because he would no longer be able to activate it. Ralph chuckled, calling the man an idiot. He said that the activation button was in his heart. The man realized that it was too late to run. Explosions began to be heard everywhere. Alex realized that he was not injured, although he should have been due to the suppression unit. The wounded counselor thought that he could not escape from the building. Alex carried him out, but he didn't understand how he managed to do it. He pulled him out even with suppressed strength. The power of this man has little to compare with. This was his chance, since Alex lost his guard and the block suppressed his power. This is the weakest state of this guy right now. Turning to the building from which the guy had just come out, he thought about what kind of explosive it was, because the high-rise building was completely destroyed. Looking at the unconscious advisor, he thought that he was very weak, but he sharply turned his thoughts to Lizzie. He was interested in where she was. The hunter noticed that the guy's thoughts were switched to something else and decided that this was the right time to attack. But because of fear he could not even lift a finger, the man did not want to wait for help. He wanted to find out all the enemy's secrets on his own. He must overcome his fear in the face of an opponent who is stronger and fight him to the death. Every day for ten years he experienced this. The advisor begged his body to start moving because he wanted to become the best bounty hunter. He wanted to be a hunter, not an advisor, not an errand dog for Mr. Schmidt, and he decided to use the poison of a winged viper, which easily destroys the nervous system of the strongest living organisms. Many cultivators died from it. This substance glorified the name of the cultivator hunter, but today it failed its owner. It seemed to renounce Alex. The man did not understand why his treasure did not break through the guy's defense, because his spiritual power was suppressed. Moreover, the attack was reflected in his direction, and he thought about how great the difference between their strengths was and whether he would really kill himself. Alex felt pain in his shoulder and asked what it was. He thought that these were the consequences of his old job and he needed to take a massage course. The hunter still had hope because Alex was a cultivator and he should have had a healing elixir. With the last of his strength, he began to call the guy. Hearing this, the guy turned around and saw that the man was coughing up blood. He asked him why this was happening. He asked if he should call an ambulance. But in response, he heard that it was too late for the ambulance. The man asked him for a healing elixir. The guy asked what it was and said that he had never heard of it before. The man angrily asked how a cultivator could not know about such a thing. Alex said that in that case, he understood everything. The hunter lay on the ground and thought that the guy was testing him and perhaps thought that it was he who was trying to poison him. The man considered Alex a monster. Alex grabbed the man by the shoulders and asked him to wait a little, saying that his partner was a cultivator and she must have this elixir. However, the advisor did not wait for help and died. Somewhere near the explosion site, Lizzie met with her friend and told her that Alex was in that building that exploded and she blamed herself for it because she didn't go in with him. The guys from her clan suggested checking everything again because Alex was the best cultivator in the secret world. He couldn't just die. The man in the cap grinned and said that someone so famous could not turn out to be such a weakling. If the enemy used explosives against him, then he was an ordinary person. But if he had been in his place, he would have easily crushed the enemy and prevented the explosion. The girl with red hair put him in his place and said that if he had nothing good to say, then he should better remain silent. One of the guys suggested ending the argument because he saw Alex heading towards them and he was carrying someone else. He was carrying a famous cultivator killer. They did not believe that he was able to destroy a cultivator killer so easily and not even be wounded. Alex put the man on the ground and walked towards the group of people. Approaching them, the guy asked if they were Lizzie's friends and thanked them for taking the time to help him. Rosie said that he saved the world and they can't sit on the sidelines and watch what difficulties he has to face. And the guy in the cap added that they didn't really help him. Alex objected, saying that the fact that they came was already help. He suggested that Lizzie told her friends that Ralph had kidnapped his sister, but he was dead and nothing was known about his sister's whereabouts. The advisor was also there. They had a nice conversation with him and he wanted to restore justice, but the man was seriously injured and he needed a healing elixir. In the eyes of the guys, he looked completely different, as if they had a nice conversation, and after that, Alex beat him half to death, but they still couldn't find out the information, so an elixir was needed. Andy asked that this be given to him because he was good at healing. It was necessary to select an elixir depending on his injury. Alex apologized to him for disturbing him and said that it would be problematic if the man died. Andy wiped the sweat from his forehead and said, it seems this man is already dead. In this case, Alex had no choice. To save his sister, 
he would have to take more serious action. The guy thought that he had gone completely crazy, having decided to please such a tough person. He hoped that Alex would not kill him. The guys suggested that Alex not get excited, saying that they would help him find his sister in one of the city's office buildings. The man said that Alex's sister was brought to this location without any incident. Ralph's men are also under their surveillance. He said that if Alex needed their help in the future, he could always turn to them. The people standing in the corridor were talking about how they had been ahead of them. Most of the city had been mobilized to search for Alex's sister, and the power of the Appel Financial Group terrified them. The mustachioed man said that Alex was truly horrified that such a powerful consortium decided to make friends with him only because he was the best rescuer in the secret world. Rescuers have a very strong influence on the public, and this is very important for financial groups. An ordinary organization like them would never be able to win this guy over to their side. Alex told Lizzie that her friends were as kind as she was. He admitted that he managed to find his sister so quickly, only thanks to them, he wanted to treat them. The guy didn't even think that they would decide to leave so quickly. The girl said that perhaps they thought that Alex would rather devour them. Alex asked what he should have done with them in their opinion. But the girl advised him to forget about it and go to his sister. It seemed to her that something was wrong with her. Alex asked the girl if she felt it too. It seemed to him that his sister had the aura of a monster. Her aura was weak and not what it should be. It was like the monsters they encountered in the secret world, unstable and chaotic. The guy assumed that it was an unusual disease. He assumed that the monster invasion of their world began today. After everything that happened, they went home to Lizzie. Alex told her that they had already caused her a lot of trouble and asked if it was really normal that they would stay at her house. The girl replied that everything was fine and they could stay as long as they wanted. Lizzie said that there is a possibility that the consortium entered into a conspiracy with another world and monsters have long since made their way to Earth and all this is somehow connected with the guy's sister. But if this is really the case, then there is no need to panic. Four main the sects will definitely not sit idly by. The main character asked if they could be involved in all this, because the secret world awarded him two million coins, but he received only 400,000. He assumed that he was not the only one who received less than what was due. The girl asked him not to say that, because if everything is as he assumes, then there should be no land for a long time and the lack of coins is possible due to bugs. She said that if a bunch of cultivators decided to make an agreement with monsters, it would be very scary. After which the guy decided to find another place to spend the night, which could be safer. But Lizzie said that she simply did not put it that way. The girl said that the guy's sister has a very good physical condition. If she were a simple person, the monster would have destroyed her long ago. But in order to return to her previous state, she will have to use key techniques and therefore it is better for them to stay with her. If other cultivators found out about her aura, it could cause trouble. Alex decided to give the coins of the secret world to Lizzie as rent. Lizzie reluctantly took them, saying that she had a feeling that the guy would not calm down until he somehow repaid her. She added that two, three thousand would be enough. As much as sixty thousand came into her account and she got a little angry about it. The guy explained that he still couldn't increase his combat power with them, of course he could buy artifacts in the secret world store, but he's not sure that he could use them, so giving them to someone who needs them is the best idea. The girl indignantly asked him if he knew about the value of these coins, and said that even if he could not use them in the secret world, he could exchange them for real money. Alex replied that before he needed money to treat his sister, but now Lizzie had to do it, and therefore she could consider it an investment in her, because if the girl became stronger, she would be able to protect them. The girl smiled sweetly and said that she could promise that. The guy thought that he couldn't rely only on the system all the time, because this time she thanked him with a pet. Maybe next time she will do it with a piece of meat. Meanwhile, in one of the best restaurants, a guy was shouting and demanding his steak. The waiter who approached him apologized to young Mr. Schmidt and promised that everything would be ready in a couple of minutes. Two men watching this from the side said that this was by chance not the spoiled son from the Schmidt Consortium. They did not understand how he could behave so impudently at such a time. One of the guys asked what Valdi had done, and the second said that he had annoyed the first-rated rescuer, after which his amusement park was blown up, and his subordinate bounty hunter, whom everyone called the Cultivator Killer, was killed. Moreover, the shelter under the park was discovered and made public, built by a consortium, recently posted on the internet, that they are only worried about themselves. The second guy asked why he couldn't find anything about this now, but the only answer he received was that it had, of course, been deleted, because Mr. Schmidt himself was involved in this. 
after which they fell silent because Mr. Schmidt came to the restaurant. He approached Valdi and he was surprised at what his brother was doing and wanted to say something else. But the man interrupted him, giving the command to take him. The guards obediently approached the guy and tied him up and led him out of the restaurant, after which the guy was beaten quite badly. And then they threw him into the trash. William said that you can't make a wall out of mud and asked the guy if he knew what he did wrong. He suggested that he shouldn't have provoked Alex and gave away the location of the shelter. But the elder Schmidt said that the mistake was that he did not kill him. Valdi and his hunter turned out to be a pile of garbage, but by humiliating them, Alex humiliated the consortium, and therefore he must die. He hoped that his brother was actually in pain, because instead of doing really important things, he was forced to bother with him. William said that it was their father's initiative, and asked not to blame him for this. He recommended that Valdi lie there and think about his behaviour, after which the younger Schmidt heard some sounds and asked if he wanted to hit him again. However, it was not William who came up, but Stefan. He said that the elder Schmidt had left ten minutes ago. The guy asked how long he had been watching him. Stefan said that from the moment he was dragged into the alley and got his ass kicked pretty good, he asked if the guy was angry and if he wanted him to save him. He said that of course not, because he didn't want to be discovered ahead of time, and in general he, not Alex, should have been the centre of attention of the secret world. Stefan asked him not to be angry because he did not become a rescuer just because of the investigation of financial groups. He admitted that he did not completely trust Valdi. He grinned and asked if the guy had a choice. He said that the guy was strong, but he couldn't do anything and his investigation was useless and only brought problems. Stefan got angry and said that Valdi was obtaining information at the cost of the lives of his comrades. He asked how the guy feels when his trusted people suffer or even die. The guy looked down in frustration and said that he remembered each of them. Old Albert, instead of playing with his grandson in the yard, he chose their game. Thomas was only 16 and had a girlfriend. Some of them were cultivators, but most of them were ordinary people. In front of these consortiums and cultivators who collude with monsters, they are nothing. If not for the lack of people, then he would never have hired that hired bounty hunter. Stefan recalled that he also died without working for the guy for a month. The guy agreed and continued saying that he was crazy because he was sent there to reconcile with Alex. But no one could have thought that everything would end like this. The guy did not imagine that Alex would be so strong in this world, and so he decided find Stefan to fight together. Stefan asked, and thereby put his life at risk, and Valdi only answered who knows, maybe the guy will die next. He said that he does not regret the victims among his friends and the deeds in general. If necessary, he is ready to sacrifice his life. Stefan said that he would continue their cooperation for now, but would watch him very closely in case he suddenly found out that he had betrayed humanity. But Valdi interrupted him and said that in this case the guy would kill him himself and he would have no complaints against him, after which he suggested moving on to their first task, saying that the next day the commander of the advanced detachment of monsters should visit the earth. Stefan asked how this was even possible. What about the barrier of the secret world? The guy did not understand how the monster was going to invade the earth. Valdi said that according to his information, a certain consortium has a stone that helps communicate with other worlds and can move a small number of monsters to earth. This commander will most likely have the power of a 2,000-year-old monster. They had to know the purpose of his arrival in advance. If they did not thwart the monster's plans in time, then the real world could be in danger. Stefan didn't understand how they could find out where the monsters were arriving. The guy said that his brother would meet the monsters. Perhaps he wanted to use their power against Alex, and they were supposed to follow him and give them a surprise. Meanwhile, at Lizzie's house, Alex was sleeping peacefully and did not suspect anything. He received a notification that his pet would arrive in eight hours. Two guys were arguing. One of them didn't understand why the lords chose Mandy as commander, and the second asked if the guy was questioning the lords' decision. He said, even though the girl comes from a family of weak monsters, her track record speaks for itself. The guy continued to get angry and said that she was only capable of being someone's pet and received this position only because she kissed the asses of her superiors. Glory on the battlefield should have belonged to such a powerful race like them. The second one grinned and said that it was really difficult for him to accept that the assistant appointed by his father had done all the work and Mandy would get the glory. They grappled. One of them told the second that if he did not shut up, then he would be finished and he said that he always spoke only the truth. The transboundary stone began to glow, which only meant that something was about to happen. The monster told the girl that the stone was almost activated, and she would soon be able to go to Earth. He was amazed that she was still training. 
She explained that the monsters of her race are born very weak and she is forced to train a lot in order to become stronger. Mandy said that while carrying out the mission she would worry about the monster, because while she was on Earth he would be treated poorly, she was worried that she had not done anything for the weak monsters. But the monster tried to calm her down, saying that she had improved cultivation methods so that weak monsters could become stronger. The girl said that it was time for her to go, because only by completing the Lord's task they could prove the value of weak races. The monster said that Mandy should be careful because on Earth she will only have the power of a one zero 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 year old monster, and if she encounters an ambush, then high-level monsters will simply look on. After all, they don't love her. Going to Earth, the girl told the monster to take care of himself until she returned.